Hello and welcome to SciDroid. Let's talk about how to get this analog signal into something that you and your computer will understand. It is called an analog signal because it's analogous to or a close representation to what's happening in the environment. When we feel temperature, we don't just feel a high and a low like a digital signal would. We feel everything in between. A temperature sensor needs to be able to feel the whole spectrum. This is why we need to use an analog sensor. But an Arduino speaks in digital using binary. This means we have to translate our analog signal into a digital one using an analog to digital converter. Let's first look at the overview of the entire process of translating a stimuli in the environment to data that we can actually use. Then we're going to break it down step by step. A stimulus happens in the real world, like shining a light on a photoresistor, heating up a temperature sensor, or pushing down on a pressure sensor. And this is going to change the electrical property of the sensor. In each of these cases, it's going to actually change the resistance of the sensor. And this change in resistance is also going to alter the voltage across your circuit. Now let's turn this voltage value into something that the computer can use. The analog to digital converter is going to create voltage buckets. The computer samples the incoming analog signal and then is going to place it into one of these buckets. Each of the buckets is associated with a code word and this is linked to an integer or whole number. And this integer is told to you and to the computer. And you can turn this integer back into a voltage value and that will be associated with a temperature, a pressure, a brightness, or some other physical quantity. This might sound like a long, complicated process, but you really only have to do one or two steps in the beginning and one or two steps at the end. The Arduino and the computer are going to do the rest. So step one of this process is going to be building the circuit. And you can use R resources, SparkFun, Adafruit, Community Forms, Datasheets, and this will all help you with building your circuits, and we're going to have a lot more videos along the way. Step two is the voltage drop across the sensor, and this is going to be read by the analog pins on the Arduino. Step three is the analog digital converter is going to sample the signal, and it's going to sample this analog signal at regular intervals, and then it's going to hold this value as the digital value is translated. This is called a sample and hold process, and the faster you are sampling, the smoother the curve is that you're going to recreate. Step four is the analog digital converter is going to quantize your signal. There's an infinite number of possible voltages when you're looking at an analog signal. There are only two voltage levels when you're looking at a digital signal, and the ADC compromises and creates n number of buckets for the voltage values to be thrown into. We need to understand how binary and decimal systems compare. If I told you to pick a one digit number in the decimal system, you would pick any number from zero to nine because it's a base 10 system. If I told you to pick a number in the binary system, you could only pick a zero or a one because it's a base two system. You can see that a one digit number has two options in binary and a two digit number has four options and a three digit number has eight options. This is more easily written as two to the n. The number of buckets is two to the n minus one since we start at zero. This is why the photon showed us in the previous video that we had options of 255 and 1023 for the analog values that we read. It has an eight and a 10 bit converter. The more buckets means the higher the resolution and the closer the curve is going to be to the original one. Let's look at an example. If we have a three bit converter with a maximum of five volts across the circuit and seven voltage buckets to work with. These are the associated code words with each voltage value and their decimal numbers. This is how all of them are linked. The converter on the Arduino Uno does successive approximation. It guesses a voltage value and compares it to the voltage from the incoming analog signal. The comparator asked if the sampled signal is greater than the guess, and through this guess and check method, a code word is produced. And we saw that this code word is linked to both a decimal number and a voltage value. The decimal number is was sent to your computer, so all you will ever see from a 3-bit converter is a number from 0 to 7. And step 5 is converting that decimal number back into a voltage. We already know how to get the associated voltage value from our table, but we can also use the equation that is V equals V max times output over bit resolution. In step 6, you have to relate the voltage back to an actual physical quantity. And you can either use a data sheet or calibrate the sensor yourself to determine the relationship between the voltage values and the physical quantity. And if we look at this temperature sensor's data sheet, we can use two points off the line that's related to our sensor to get an equation. And you can increase or decrease the temperature on your sensor and see the corresponding voltage output and create your own line. And then you can make a simple equation to put in your code. 
Looking at this temperature graph, we can pick two points on the line to make an equation, where y is the voltage value and x is the temperature for our sensor. You can find the slope m by using this equation. We get a slope of about 0 0.0095. Then you can find your y-intercept, which is b, by plugging in one of the points to this equation. Our intercept turns out to be about 0.52. We know what our voltage is from the code, so we can solve this equation for x, which is the temperature that we're trying to find. If you put this in your code, the program will always convert and you don't have to do any more math. If you'd like to learn more about the internal workings of analog to digital converters, you can click this playlist. We'll be adding videos explaining binary math, logic gates, most significant bits, least significant bits, all of which give you a good foundation and understanding for electronics. You can chat with us on any of these social media platforms, you can talk to us in the comments below. You can support us at patreon.com slash sidejoy. And remember, keep exploring.